Okay, this is getting ridiculous. How can I kidnap you to force you to make content, and yet you still manage to screw up an upload schedule? You greatly underestimate my powers of procrastination. Will you please just do the next video? I swear to God, you are the only person alive that's able to stress out his own kidnapper. Today, we are going to be taking a look at The Redneck, an Infowar story, which is the most recent project from Good Shag Productions. I actually promoted The Redneck back when it was still in development and it was still called Infowars The Redneck. I'm not totally sure why they changed the title, but here we are. The film is actually a spin-off of sorts from a previous short they did called The False Flag, an Infowar story. I'm not going to give that one an in-depth review though because it's so short, but I'll let you know that it ends with hooded Darth Sidious parodies pulling the strings and manipulating pulp culture and information before hitting the button that lets Disney merge with Fox, which is their ultimate plan for world domination. <laughs> you know, saying that out loud, I realize how ridiculous it sounds. And that's where this film picks up, after the Disney and 20th Century Fox merger. This short takes a lot of shots at, surprise, rednecks and conservatives, especially the ones in my hometown of Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So if having your conservative viewpoints challenged in any way is something that will offend you, sucks, get over it. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. The film begins with our protagonist, simply credited as the Redneck, played by Evan McDaniel, asleep on the couch as he listens to talk radio as every character is voiced by writer and director Dalton Lee. Redneck accidentally changes the station and hears the radio host talking about global warming, so he throws the radio. His wife, played by Julia Pemberton, scolds him for freaking out. He accosts her and rants about communism before she gives him his breakfasts. After putting in a big old chaw, he continues to rant about communists and liberals. If I remember correctly, most if not all of what he's saying during this rant is stuff that Dalton actually heard people say in person or read in comments on Facebook. I can't go through all of it because of time, but here are some highlights. You know how I feel about that imaginary shit like gun reform and fucking global warming? Tens of thousands of scientists say it's a hoax anyway, so I'm gonna go with the scientists. And if you don't believe me, look it up. But it's easy to do unless you're a liberal. Liberals can't read or do research. That's a proven fact. Yeah. That's what it's like where I'm from. And people wonder why I moved 200 miles away. His wife lets him know that he's dumb and so is his flag, which sets him on a heritage not hate rant. His wife leaves and lets him know that she has her gun with her. Redneck flips through the radio and stumbles across a show talking about the Disney and Fox merger. Confusing 20th Century Fox for Fox News, he believes that his only source of reliable news has been taken over by liberal media, so he panics and runs for cover. We see him boarding up his shed as a makeshift bunker as he writes in his journal about the liberal apocalypse he believes is happening outside. We see him mowing through endless cans of dip and bottles of Mountain Dew as he scratches notches into the wall to show the passage of time. There are so many quick punchlines and jokes not only in this sequence alone, but the entire short as a whole, and there's no way I can cover all of them, so please. Go watch it for yourself so that you can admire how good this writing is. Unless you're a conservative snowflake, of course. A knock on the door terrifies Redneck as he is sure it is one of those libtards coming to take his guns, so he ends up firing at the person on the other side in self-defense. He realizes that he's run out of chewing tobacco and panics. He suits up in a homemade hazmat suit to go on the hunt for more chew before seeing his wife on the ground. He blames the Democrats for killing her. As he sets out on his mission, he is seen by one of his neighbors, also played by Dalton. Redneck goes to his friend's house, and once he enters the garage, he is met by three men with guns. Matt Inman as Eugene, Mikey Mann as Earl, and yours truly as Cletus, accusing him of being a commie. Redneck says that everyone is gone because of the liberal takeover. They swap horror stories about the apocalypse so far. 
My main critique is really with this sequence with the character of Earl, because through most of it, he talks like this. Probably playing at a friend's house. Matter of fact, you the one just so fucking told me to come here with y'all. Which is funny, don't get me wrong, but it's nearly impossible to hear what he's saying. Which I get is the punchline. But originally, he was supposed to have subtitles, and I feel like it's a really missed opportunity because I think not only would adding subtitles also be really funny, but he has a lot of jokes that are just dropped or missed because you have no idea what he's saying. I feel like I know why Dalton took the subtitles out because of something that happens later, but I don't know. It's just always bugged me that he never ended up putting the subtitles in like he said he was going to. The men sit around with lips full of chew, talking about how libtards and dem- <laughs> The men The men- <laughs> The men sit around with lips full of chew, talking about how libtards and demon craps, both real things that people from my hometown called Democrats and liberals, by the way. As Redneck fiends for some dip, zoning out as his friends banter about Tim Allen. Later, while everyone is asleep, Redneck attempts to steal some chew and witnesses Earl snorting a heaping mound of something. Like, Good God, this man knows how to party. Before Redneck can grab the tobacco, Cletus wakes everyone up. Clean my fucking shit bucket overflowed onto my bedroll. <laughs> I don't know why, but that just that part was so funny to shoot. We barely got it. It took so long to do. <laughs> That's Nutella on the bucket, by the way. <laughs> because that's, that's the closest thing we had to actual shit. <laughs> oh my god. Eugene threatens Redneck with his gun, accusing him of being a communist after breathing in that libtard oxygen. It's revealed that he's only there for the dip, so Eugene says that Redneck has to leave half of his hazmat suit since he's apparently a commie socialist now. Meanwhile, Earl is overdosing on whatever was on his knife. Poor guy went too hard too fast. Rookie move. Eugene leaves Redneck alone to check on his cousin, who starts convulsing. Which leads to this. There's a difference between socialism and democratic socialism. Let me guess. Heritage, not hate. Ha. <laughs> this is why I think the subtitles were removed. To make the impact of him now being able to speak clearly hit harder. And if that's the case, I get it. If that's not why, then it was really a huge missed opportunity with the subtitles. Redneck grabs a can of chew and runs out as Eugene mourns over his cousin. He discovers that Eugene had apparently been planning for this as there is a note in the empty can. We see Dalton again as Redneck wanders the street in a daze. He raises his gun to his head, but is approached by Dalton. Redneck goes on another rant as Dalton tries to understand what's happening. Dalton explains that Fox News and 20th Century Fox are different things and the news is all a bunch of bullshit made for sensationalism anyway, all the while speaking like he just came off the set of a mobster movie. Look at yourself. Look what the fuck you're wearing. You look like a fucking dipshit. You're armed to the teeth, ready for battle. But the only person who you're gonna kill is yourself, you dumb fuck. He naturally talks like this. All the time. He has the, the entire time that I've known him. I, I don't know why, but it works for him, so do your thing, I guess. Dalton helps him to his feet and imparts this bit of wisdom to Redneck and the audience. You can keep your dumbass flags. You can keep your guns. Just don't walk around the street with anything too big and scary. Don't be racist or sexist, xenophobic. Don't be angry at things that you don't understand. Because one day you might understand them. And then you'll feel like a fucking idiot for being angry at it in the first place. Is that the key to happiness? No. But it's worked for a lot of us. Redneck throws away his suit before substituting long cut tobacco for pouches and drinks Diet Mountain Dew instead of regular. 
character development, I guess. His wife returns from the hospital, very much alive and pissed all the way off. He tries to explain how he's grown as a man and pours out his heart about how he will no longer be racist and abusive to her anymore. He then says that she can go make him some supper if her arm isn't too hurt. She raises his gun and we cut to black. We see Cletus and Eugene back in the garage watching over Earl, who now has a jewel and a laptop. Because, you know, liberal millennials. Eugene says that even though they now have differing opinions, he's still family, and that's all that matters. Eugene shows Cletus that it had nothing to do with the libtard oxygen, but rather what Earl was snorting. It turned out to be brain force, a product sold by the American father of psychotic bullshit, Alex Jones. Cletus goes to the library and flips through some history books until he sees some pictures of the founding fathers. He realizes that they all wore pantyhose, makeup, and wigs, which causes him to sit with a thousand yard stare as he questions everything he's ever known while the credits roll. This is by far the best product that Good Shack Productions has made. Aside from the subtitle thing, I have no issues with it whatsoever. It may be the longest, but not a single second is wasted. There are constant punchlines throughout, some of which move by so fast that you can find something new every time you watch it. The writing is so sharp and witty that at some points it seems like it might have come straight from an episode of South Park. The commentary might not be applicable to everyone, but it's honestly spot on for the town that we're from. All of the performances are on point. Except for this guy. He sucks. I cannot stand him! The set was so much fun to work on, and I can't wait until the next time I get to make something with these guys. Until then, at least I get to enjoy watching all of their work up to this point, and love every second of it. Except for the sauce. I'm sorry, Dalton, but I just can't do it. It's too odd. There. That's it. There's nothing left. None of my friends have made anything else. I'm done. Not yet, you aren't. Matt has several skits, there's more good shag shorts, there's still so much that we can cover. You aren't getting off that easily. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What was that? Don't worry about it. Focus on your next video. Stay over there. Ah! Uh, pay no attention, attention to the man in the closet. <laughs> Why am I not even surprised? It was his idea. Excuse me. I would never do such a thing to my dear friend, Brandon. You know that, right? Guys, what is this really about? Well, you know the last time I was here and you said that people's opinions change all the time? People change their opinions all the time. It just happens. All right, I'll keep that in mind. I don't like the sound of that at all. Yeah? We just wanted you to take a look at old reviews and change grades that you no longer agree with. So that's what Channing meant by review my old reviews. You heard that? Yeah. Everyone did. But you guys probably should have just asked me because I was planning on doing that anyway. Oh. Yeah. Now how do I get out of here? Just the door right behind you. And, uh... I guess I'm not really in, like, a dungeon. No, just green screen. Huh. Well, I've been trying to tell you for years that you are an idiot, but you never believe me. Okay, thanks, bye! Bye. I'm still in my house. Thank you guys for watching. The links to Good Shag Productions and all of my social media will be down in the comments. But before you go there, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you guys next time. Now, I'm gonna go make sure that Eric is okay.